What's going on, everybody? <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast. We are live from the Hot Chicken Old Town, Scottsdale, Arizona, for episode, wait for it, 700 of the podcast. Uh, after a what, seven year period for us, we have Tracy Cortez here with us today. You were episode six something, and now we're three months later, episode 700. Yes. You are the self proclaimed uh, black sheep of the Cortez family growing up. <laughs> yeah. I listened to that in an interview today. I'm like, yeah, I can relate to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The black sheep. Oh my God. Youngest yeah. daughter of, you have three, three older brothers you mm -hmm. grew up with, youngest of four, right? Yeah, yeah. Which is always it was, you very know, fun. It was. And everyone was like, you weren't the, people tell me, like, you weren't the black sheep. And it's, no, I was. You know, yeah. I was. My dad, my dad, Let's it be known too. Troublemaker. <laughs> yeah, I know. All I know. over the place, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Grew up. What, where's Maryville? Like 25 minutes from here? here? Yeah. Uh, about 25, 30. 25, 30. Could minutes. be like 40, depending on traffic. Yeah. As of recently. It was like 35. It took me 35 minutes to get from North Phoenix to here today. I don't know what it was for you. You got to go to Peoria later, which is gonna be a plane oh ride. That's almost like a 40 plus minute drive. It's like a plane ride almost. Yeah. Like the roads change colors. Literally, yeah. literally, it's you know what though they're making the they're, they're making the, the freeway nicer. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, you at least it's a smoother drive. <laughs> you said you uh, grew up here, basically in Old Town Scottsdale. In your youth. I, I did, I did, I did a lot of partying here. Your twenties, in my teens, I don't know. Yeah, you know, seventeen you guys, kids don't do that. Mm -hmm. I was seventeen partying in Old Town. How would I get in? I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, we, we had a guest here two weeks ago. They weren't, they weren't going to let him in, and I had to like really go out of my way to make sure that they let him in because he was 20. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, I never had a problem. They kind of just like, oh. I feel like he looks a lot different than you, so. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it's a crazy atmosphere because I was telling you I've only been here seven times in a seven-year period. Yeah. Just not involved in the vibe at all. Yeah. Do you have any like experiences that were fun? not fun here? why you don't do them anymore oh it was always a blast here i love at the time i loved it yeah you know what i mean now it's just it's a lot it's it, it's a lot i'd rather spend my time elsewhere spend my time with like my friends at, at their house we're just not much of like a club people yeah. as much as we were yeah in our early 20s mm -hmm. oh my god we, I, I, <laughs> I feel like i sound old now <laughs> 29 when, now i'm 29 it's like uh, i'd rather just you know, if I'm gonna get drunk, we're gonna make sure we able to. It's worth it. It's worth it, and we're safe, and yeah. we're home, and I don't have to worry about no one driving home drunk, and like we we're pretty reckless when we were younger, and yeah. now it's just, you know, maturity. Especially when you're I guess. doing it with the right people too. It's yeah. like everybody's behaving, you're celebrating something with the right people. Or when you were younger, you're like, why am I hanging out with these people? I feel yeah. terrible. And it's like I never want to hang out with these people ever you know, again. Yeah, you know what? In 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 life, these past couple years, um, I've actually had. The same friends group, friend group. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, I've cut some people off um, in the time, but as of late, I, like all my friends are eight plus years, nine, ten. So I have a, I have a good group of friends. Yeah, and they keep you accountable too. They, you know what? One just called me yesterday, and she chewed my ass out for you know my behavior as of recently. Uh, <laughs> what was that? Uh, I just fucking. Why? Cause I'm I'm injured. Just wired. Just, yeah. I'm injured, so it's like I have a lot of free time in my hand, mm -hmm. and it's almost like I don't know what to do with this. So I'm trying to stay busy, like with podcasts and photo shoots, and trying to travel with sponsorships. But when I have nothing to do, it's like I go sit down at the gym and I watch everyone train, and I get like, frustrated. And yeah. So I'm spending my time just kind of like enjoying the now, not thinking about tomorrow. And she's like, hey. She's like, do better, you know? It takes a lot for my friends to try to check me. Yeah. Like, if, so having that, it made me realize, like, all right, let me start calming down. Let me slow my life down. Let me stay home, because I'm traveling a lot, yeah. too. Well, I remember the last time we talked, you were talking about, you're like, my friends know. Like, if I don't hear from them, or if they don't hear from me yeah. in like a two week, three week period, it's like, it's okay. She's doing her thing. Yeah. You know, she's taking yeah, care yeah. of business. But like, yeah. now they kind of have to like check, make sure, like, all right, are you driving the intensity up a little bit, knowing yeah. that you can't train and you can't really go 100%? Yeah, yeah. Because it's hard to like get rid of that mental state too when you're not able to do it. Yeah. Especially when you're itching for it and you're like, oh, I'm just going to go to the gym and train. It's yeah, like, that. dude, that's, that's exactly what happened when uh, after my hand surgery, I went, I went to the gym thinking I was okay. And granted, I wasn't punching it. We were just like kind of rolling. And I put my knee down and I just heard the loudest pop on my knee. And that's when I went 
que por que checo el DACA, I tore my MCL, and it was one of those things where my coaches are kind of also like not too happy with themselves, like damn, we should have held her back. As an athlete, I tend to just go 100, and my body, you know, it's like muscle memory, my body isn't too familiar with it because I, the period I took off from the hand surgery. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And how did the hand, the, what is it, thumb injury? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How'd that come about? Wrestling. R wrestling. I was, re yeah. I was wrestling with um, a high school, with some high school kids. Yeah. And some teenagers, and, but they're fucking good. Like, they are legit. And um, I wasn't trying to be too, use my strength against them. And I just kind of posted, and that's when I just, my thumb immediately just swole up. Mm -hmm. so. Which is brutal, you know? Yeah. And like, you gotta watch as other people, because you're probably still going to the gym, you're still. Yeah, yeah. And not just watching. that, but just like people that I once competed with, I kinda, I'm kind of just seeing their career like just fly by, and they're doing amazing. And I'm kind of, I feel like I'm just sitting down watching everyone, which is, mm -hmm. it's frustrating, but it's part of the game. You know, I'm not the only one that's, that's experiencing injuries. Yeah. So how was how were the fights on Friday night at uh, Gila River? They were good. Oh we're my gonna, god. I'm gonna botch the name of the promotion. What is it? Um, LFA. 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 They were really good. It, yeah, that was my first time um, going to go see uh, local fights in really? forever. So it was nice seeing like the up and comers and all the, all these all these guys with like that hunger. Yeah. It's oh, really where exciting. you once were, you know. I'm, that's where I made my, well, a lot of fights. I was gonna say my amateur debut, but it wasn't there. Um, my, my amateur debut was at Havasu. Oh, wow. It was in Havasu, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in this old organization, but it was nice. It was good seeing everybody. It was, I kind of got a little emotional. Really? I was sitting there and I was like, oh my God, I fought so many times in here at Wild Horse Pass. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's gotta be like nostalgia for you to not only be there with other fighters like Sean O'Malley probably experienced the same thing. Yeah. Just like yeah. being there growing up. Oh yeah, there's the a lot of, there, there was a couple of UFC fighters there. So. Cause there's a lot of people from here that you yeah. wouldn't realize are from yeah. here. Oh yeah. So like the two main gyms here is like uh, one in the West, way far in the West Valley. And then obviously the gym I train at here in Scottsdale, but both gyms are just filled with UFC fighters. Yeah. And up, uh, up and comers. So yeah. it's exciting. Which is, have you ever gotten the chance to like train an up and comer or like asked to train an no, up and comer? No, I'm not a coach. You're still no. young. You're still in your 20s. No, you're not really just that, but I just, I don't want to be a coach. I don't have the, I don't think I have That's the That's what like half it. the coaches say. Yeah. When they're like, no, I don't want to be a coach. Probably, they don't to I don't know. I probably, you're right. I just don't, you know what? One, I don't have the patience, but like my friend, a very, like probably one of my best friends, She's up and coming as well. Yeah. And uh, her name's a uh, Amy. And I have I have the patience. I just, I think I gotta like care for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I gotta care for you and be like, all right. And if like, I'll be training and then I'll see her and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's sparring. I run over there and I'll just like try to coach her and make sure so you whoever have, she's- So you have to care about the person. Yeah. yeah you have to be invested in, Emotionally in their future. Emotionally invested. And I'm just- what if it's someone that you see like on the up and up, like, oh man, like they have potential. They just need like a tweak here, a tweak there, and then they approach you about coaching. No, I no, really. Yeah. I just, I just, I don't think I have the patience. I'm a student myself. Um, if I'm training with someone, like I have teammates where we're training and they don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'll give them, hey, this is what I do. You know what I mean? But I don't try to like coach them and mm -hmm. be in their corner and be there for their career you yeah. know I'm, I'm way too invested in my career and my future and I think to be a coach um, you really kind of have to like stop your life and invest in other people yeah. you know you can almost kind of give your time to them mm -hmm. and my own dreams and ambitions and my, my goals and where I see myself headed I just don't see myself stop it, and it's selfish but it's it, it is what it is and yeah. I just don't see myself stopping my time, you know. Well, I'll talk to you when you're 39. God, that sounds kind of mean. When you're 39, yeah. you're like, okay. I know, yeah. when you're 49. I don't know, we'll see, yeah. completely behind you, and you're like, oh, yeah. let's, start, let's start a coaching yeah. team, and you have all of these little You know, hopefully by that age, I'm, I'm, I'm starting, I'm in like my acting career, and modeling, and my own business, and hopefully I'm, I'm still being pretty busy yeah. by then. So what do you want to do in acting? I believe we talked about this, but do you have any like specific things that you're trying out now? Um, now that you I, have some free time? Right now, no. I wish. I Not right now. Um, I'm still, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. 
I'm um. I've had people take calls on the episodes. Before. Really? It's oh, fine. No, yeah. that's rude. Just put it into the microphone. Uh, right? You, like, know? you don't know how yeah, personal it's gonna be, though. No, oh. I no. They're all like, no, my friends yeah. ain't got no filters. <laughs> Which is the best content? I know, right? <laughs> the shit they'll say. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just one of those things where I I, I do I do want to jump in other you know realms in the entertainment business like acting, modeling. Um, advertising for big companies, yeah. but right now it's just my full focus is fighting and, and getting closer to the belt as I can. Yeah, because you want you said like it was like four fights away, right? Yeah. Idealistically. I, r realistically, yeah. Ideally, yes. Realistically as well. Um, that's why I said idealistically. I, yeah. I don't know me, if that's a word. For or me, not. it's like realistically because it's really yeah. gonna happen. But um, you know the the way. My body's been taking a toll yeah. as of recently. We'll see, we'll see how so this goes. So the thumb, torn MCL, right? Yeah. So you got a little time on your hands. I do. How, how many years ago were you last in this bar? So we're in the hot chicken Old Town Scottsdale. Oh my God. You came here in your 20s. Yeah, I, I want to say, I, no, I want to say I was maybe like 24. 20, 24. That's my age. That's five years ago. I was like 24 when I last came in here. Really? With my best friend, Gary. Yeah. Nice. And we got... Like, you know, shit pretty faced. fucking shit faced right out there. Oh, yeah, right, yeah. right out on the patio. Right, right out there. At, at the hot chick. Uh, talking about fighting, how, how many bar fights have you been in? <laughs> and what was the most recent bar fight? You know what? I'm not much of a fighter. I'm a lover. I am. Yeah. I, if, and people don't believe me when I say this, but I have my friends to vouch for it. How many times have you been pushed into fighting? Yes. Because people will test your limits they on this They test stuff. me. These fucking girls test me, man. And I want to say the most, like the last one, it was a few years ago. And, and I don't want to get into details, but it was a group of girls. And it was just me and one girl that knew how, she, was just, she just knew how to throw, throw a punch. Yeah. But she's not a fighter. Um, we got, I got into a bar fight. And I, they just started falling. That's all I can say. Uh-huh. And then one thing led to another, and, and next thing you know, security's like, "You gotta go," oh, yeah, that's <laughs> and tough. we booked it, we left, and because yeah. now with your image, it's like if they find you, you're yeah, you're yeah. in trouble, right? Oh, yeah, I don't want to see too much detail. Yeah, but yeah, I I, I could have got in trouble, so I don't. Do, but now it's like when girls try, I'm just I would tell them like, "Hey, please, please don't hit me," you know? Mm -hmm. They're like, "What, bitch?" I'm like. I'm like, girl, you don't know what you're fucking doing. Yeah. Like, please stop. Uh -huh. And I, ha I have to walk away. You just know within five seconds you can just end these people's lives. A hundred percent. And they have no idea how to fight. And I say that humbly because they're just flailing. These girls don't right. know. Girls want to just pull hair, and I'm like, no. So yeah. So with uh, these injuries, obviously you're just still trying to go to the gym, still yeah. watching people, still having fun, going to the fight on Friday night at Gila River. Yeah. What are you doing in your free time? What are you enjoying right now? Um, quality time with friends a lot you know what the, the, these injuries have it's been like a blessing and a curse because mentally I have to slow down because I'm such a workaholic yeah I'm a fucking workhorse and I don't know how to stop yeah and um, and um, this like this period has really allowed me to just focus on like myself and slow down and which I haven't. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. I haven't slowed down. I've been traveling a lot, but um, I am enjoying a lot of like my free time with my friends. Yeah. Which I haven't had in a very long time. Like mm -hmm. I've reconnected with them. I've been with them. Only because the reason I'm so tight with my friends, I don't have a lot of family here in the states. It's just me and my two brothers. My dad's a truck driver, so he's all over the place. all over the yeah. place. So we, we don't get to see him often. But um, so my friends are my family. You know, we're like this. I have a tight circle where I don't have a big friend group. Um, and yeah, I've been able to reconnect with my friends in a way that I just haven't in years. Mm -hmm. Since I've been in the UFC, I want to say. They're like Tracy's responding to texts within five minutes now. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. They're like, Tracy's over on a random weekday? What? You know? Because so. only you and like specific people who have that schedule can understand that. Where like, if I have a friend who I know is just sitting on the couch watching Netflix and they respond to me within like, like a 24-hour period, I'm like, dude, 
yeah. you can respond to me right away. I know yeah. you're on your phone. Yeah. Where it's like you're training, you're doing your thing. Yeah. Texts probably come frequently, so it's yeah. just like 50 unread text yeah. messages. And sometimes I forget. I feel so rude. I, and they know. They're like, you know what? Just fucking call her. Mm -hmm. Like my friends know, like don't text. And if they do text me, they, it's not important. Yeah. But I get a call. I definitely get calls more than text messages. From you my know those friend. are important. Yeah. 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 I don't turn down. Like I won't reject a call unless it's someone I don't want to talk to. <laughs> yeah. We never want to talk to those people we don't want to talk to. Yeah. I'm not much of a caller either. I don't You're know not? about you. I am. I'm actually a FaceTimer. FaceTime I can do because you can read people's body <laughs> language like, yeah. over FaceTime. But like I'm if I get FaceTimer. a call from someone and we're talking for like two hours on the phone, I'm like, dude, just FaceTime me next time, please. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, no, I'll just FaceTime. If it's something, I'll be like, hey. Because sometimes. And then if I feel like it's going like past like the five minute, I'm like, yeah. they're like, bitch. And they're probably like busted, you know, uh -huh. like, which is what a normal day to day. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a FaceTimer. Yeah, because sometimes it's like you say something, then there's awkward silence for like five seconds, and you're like, "What happened? Yeah. Like, did we disconnect?" Yeah. Or like, yeah. or like I could read your body language if we're over FaceTime. I know. You know, and they see me like normally when I'm, I'm like, "Bro, I'm gonna just fucking FaceTime you and put you down," and I'll like put my friends down, and I'll be washing dishes, and they'll be at work, and it's just it, yeah, I, I would 100% prefer FaceTime. Who is someone in your life currently that you spend time with, friends, mm -hmm. that's into this scene? The party scene? Yeah. Oh my god. Uh, all of them? In a way that's like, I, we can't do this every night though. Every once in a while is fine, right? Yeah. Like everybody has those friends who are like, once in a while, let's go out, get some drinks. You know what? No drink. one. Um, oh, maybe my best friend Gary. Maybe Gary. Uh, he, Him and his boyfriend, they, they hit up the bars like so frequently. Really? And I'm just, they're definitely, they're like casual drinkers. And I'm like, I don't know how you guys fucking do it. Yeah. Like, I just cannot drink during the week, week night, maybe a glass of wine, and that's it. But they're just fr like frequently at the bars, not like what is this place called again? The hot chick. Not like In here, the hot chick. Yes. Not like yes. here where it gets fucking lit here, you mm -hmm. know. After um, nine o'clock. But a lot of my friends don't. We don't hit up the bars like that no more. If anything, yeah. we go to, we go off roading, we grill like at the top of the mountain, ATV camping, like. Or we'll just have a barbecue, we'll pull day at their house, and one thing leads to another. We're just, it's great company, but to say like we all got fucked up no. at a bar, it's been a while. So what are some of your hobbies then? You mentioned grilling and... Yeah. Well, like out, Sunday, uh, Saturday, we were hanging out by the pool all day. Saturday, I kind of just rested, and then Sunday, we were up in the mountains. That's yeah. nice. Everyone brought their razors out, and we are just... Your razors? No. Well, not mine. I, I don't have one. Their razors. All my friends. Like, it was like a group of, like, five, six, I want to say. Wow, that's and a lot And we're just going up the mountain. Are you guys uh, rodeo people? I per I haven't... I used to go country dancing. Because there's a lot out there. Not rodeos, but I used to go country dancing. Yeah. Um, just to find, like, a different environment, you know? I like... I like... I love trying new things out. But, as of recently, no. I have friends who are like, you got to check out this rodeo, but don't go to that rodeo. That's not a real rodeo. And it's oh, like, just yeah, like no. Full blown country cowgirl boots. I'm hat. Mean. I'm like, uh, yeah. Maybe next time uh -uh. they're gonna be available. What? Because my friends are like really fucking like Mexican, Mexican, like yeah. paisas, Mexican. That means like, like sombreros. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So that's. They'll be like, hey, why we about that? Like, there'll be a, there's gonna be a, a band, not like a like a band, but like trumpets and horns yeah. and toot toot, like the whole thing. Yes, like it's an event. Yes, so we're having banda here. Couple pull up and it's just good times, good times. Have you ever wanted to? Well, you said you didn't go that much, but the first time I saw like bull riding and people falling off, I'm like, I'm hooked. Yeah. So I went training at blue. Was it blue chip out here? I don't know. I think that's what it's called. But I got trained, went on a bowl, flew off in like under three seconds. Oh my god! Just got like whiplash. I, I, off I, I don't like think flying. I've ever seen anybody bull ride. Really? Yeah. I love riding horses though. That's a lot I more ride, peaceful. Yeah. They don't throw yeah, you off. Yeah. They don't attack you. Yeah, I ride horses, but I would not. I see a bull and I, I don't. I don't get close to it. Mm. I landed perfectly on my back, and I'm like, this is how you, like, basically, when you go flying off this thing, because you're going to go flying off this thing, they're just, like, basically just, like, land back, fall straight on your back, and as soon as I, kind of, 
but at the same time you're expecting it so i'm like okay i'm fine and then you look over and the bull's just running all over the place so you're thinking like if it runs back and makes eye contact with me i gotta roll out of the way oh because some God. people will get flown off and then the bull just attacks i've seen that yeah through ig mm -hmm. and I'm that's like entertaining to watch to watch <laughs> oh my god i would fucking lose it uh-huh i would lose it that's crazy yeah i could never that's my that's my bull riding experience. Is there anything that uh, you you people wouldn't typically know about you that you'd be into? Um, you know what? I I'm I'm an outdoors person. Yeah. I love being outdoors. So when I tell people like, "Yo, let's go camping," they look at me like, "You go camping?" Yeah. And I don't mean like bougie camping. I mean like. Tents, just one tent a tent you know i bring my dogs and make your own fire grill make a fire i love camp i love being outdoors i love cliff jumping i love like going to the beach whatever it is outdoors i love yeah. doing the beach is calm cliff jumping i feel like in your state it's it's like you can't really do it that much i can't i can't i can't do you, a lot of you things beat that yourself i do up if you got hurt cliff yeah jumping. no you know what it's um my friends definitely Cause I'm like a little firecracker, you know? Like, I love the adrenaline. So my friends are constantly like, Tracy, don't fucking do that. Tracy, watch out. You know, especially cause like my knee, uh, when I injured it, we were up in the mountains uh, Sunday and there was a creek and I kind of started like dancing a little bit on the creek. They're like, stop, you're gonna fucking like hurt your knee. And they like have to sit me down. And I, which I, could, I appreciate, you know? Yeah, but it's I, gotta be the most difficult thing. Like, cause we were talking about it before you being hurt, but also just eliminating that mindset of just like, I gotta go yeah. turn it on and go to the gym. Yeah. Like, how's everything? I just feel like I'm tougher than what I am. Yeah. No, I'm a, t I'm a tough ass female. No, you absolutely no, are. No, I'm a tough I don't female. think I take that back. That. I just, because I think I'm, because I know I'm so tough, I do shit that I shouldn't fucking do. Yeah. And it, it sometimes it backfires. Yeah. Did you have a fight lined up before I you got did. hurt? I so did. there's always just those things. Cause you had a fight. Are we still in May, by the way? We are. Yes, I had a fight lined up this month. Really? I was getting scheduled. Ah, so no one knows this. I was getting scheduled to fight uh, in May. I was like, all right. They told me that I want to see maybe Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. And then I told my coaches, all right, well, let's see where I'm at. Right. Uh, like cardio wise, can I last a round? Can I not last a round? Can I last a round and a half? Yeah. So I went in and I tore, that's when I tore my pec. Like this, this one. So how brutal is it tearing a pec? Cause I feel like once you tear it all the way off, you don't no, feel I it. No, I didn't tear it all the way off. Thank God. I just, it, it was a pretty so good tear So it still though. must have hurt still. It's, yeah. it's stung so bad. And I felt it immediately. And the next day I was like, Dude, like I can't pull, I can't push, I can't wizard. Did like, you see it too visibly? It was the bruised. Giant. Yeah, yeah, it was bruised. It was bruised pretty bad. And then, um, and then l later on, I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, I was like, well, let me go wrestle. Maybe I could wrestle, right? I waited for the weekend. That was Friday. I tore the peg. I waited for the weekend to go by. I go, maybe I'll get better. I didn't think much of it. I just knew it hurt. And then I went to go train Monday and I was wrestling and that's when this happened. And I'm just like, just and I saw it fucking, next and, and it, it, it got so swollen and my ass thinking, you know, trying to, it's just like the athlete in me maybe. Yeah. I go, hey, I go, um, Adrian, which is, he was a coach. I go take my, cause I couldn't control it. I don't know. I had no like strength no mobility to it. And, None. Yeah. I go take my thumb to my hand, right? So he taped it and I was just wrestling like this, like just cupping necks and whatever. And I couldn't grab a wrist. And finally, after maybe like a minute or two, I was like, dude, I can't do it. It's hurting like really bad. Mm -hmm. And then I told my coaches the next day, I said, hey, I really hurt my finger. And I knew something was wrong because even just grabbing my phone like this, my thumb was just popping out of place, which was, I had no strength to it. So did you feel that discomfort then? It, I, sure it hurt and yeah. then the discomfort. So then finally I went to go get MRI here. I figured I'll get one on my pec as well. And that's when I, oh, they're like, well, you need surgery and you tore your pec. I was, told the coaches crying. I was like, well, I'm not fighting in May. This was like the end of February. So you were still going to push it then? I was going to push it. Yeah. I was going to risk it.
I love what I fucking do, and I was gonna. Not it almost nobody. adds to it because you love pressure, right? Yeah. Like you. Well, love... if I did any surgery, I would have just fucking gone for it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was like, I can do this. Yeah. I know. Like my mindset is, I don't tell my body. My body doesn't tell me to slow down. I'm in control of my body, which I'm fucking crazy for that, you know. But it's got me this far. <laughs> yeah. But now I'm injured, and it's one of those things where it's like, you know what? This is more than just an injury. I'm I'm going through a lot in my personal life as well. Yeah. So it's it's. I feel like it's God's way to telling me to just stop mm -hmm. and just slow down. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. then I, I got, I didn't get to sign the contract, but it was there for me for this for month. Yeah. Who are you fighting? Uh, no, I don't want to say yet because yeah. you know we never. Too know. much legal things going on. A lot of big fights coming up in the UFC. You're mm -hmm. not necessarily a fan of the product, though, if I recall. Mm -hmm. More so invested in my division. Yeah, in your yeah. division. Obviously, it's I got a lot work. of shit for that. You know that? I, I know. I know. <laughs> I'm aware. I posted the clip. Yeah, I know. You know. I, they were like, "What were they saying?" I got so much shit for not being a fan of the sport. Yeah. Well, because all the UFC and MMA and no one believes me. They're like, she, I, I, saw, I saw someone say, and they're always the nerds she's so stuck, stuck in up and she thinks she's. Yeah. It's like, no, you guys reach out to my coaches. Message that Tracy is not really a fan of the sport yeah. unless it's like my my brother Henry, which a close friend of mine, a teammate. Even then, um, or a girl in my division, like I genuinely just don't really watch it. Mm -hmm. You know, I might watch film on a girl I'm gonna fight, and that's about it. He, I got so much shit for that. I can't believe it. My most viral video yet on, Is it uh, really? on YouTube. Yeah, but oh, yeah. yeah. All, Trace Cortez like, says she's not a fan of the sport. Uh huh. Right. right? It, but it's all those stuck in the basement kids who yeah. have no experience yeah. in even like going running outside or saying yeah. that stuff. Yeah. They're just like, oh, she has no idea what she's talking yeah. about. You know. Yeah, it's what so, it is. It's what you know? it is. It's you you it deal is. with it all the time, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, yeah. YouTube, just like no name people who don't even show their face on their social media. Yeah, oh my God. They're just like, oh, dude, you don't have her on again. She doesn't know what she's yeah. talking about. It's she's like just, someone saying they're ugly and then they have no profile picture of themselves. It's like, like, who are you? Excuse me. You could very well be a bot. I don't even yeah, know. It's you know? Just, oh my God. So, or it could yeah. be one of your closest friends and you have no idea. Right. No. Could you imagine? Oh my God, no. I would cut them off so quick. <laughs> no. well, how, how has that been with everything going on? You know, obviously, probably being on social media, one of your jobs when you're not fighting, obviously doing what you love to do, yeah. is building your brand on build, social media, I do build right? My brand, yes. I am very focused on creating content and just building a good, positive fan base. Yeah. Um, and on my social media, it's, it's been hard because I don't ever really post anything personal everything's fight related and um this year i've been posting a little bit more different you know a little bit more lifestyle um but it's been kind of hard because i'm not training yeah so it's like well what the fuck do i post you know yeah. i'm not just gonna post anything so i'm kind of i also took a break from social media like i'll post once maybe once a month but that's about it i don't i don't i haven't really been on there i was on tiktok a lot kind of Took a little break from that as well. It's a well. great cleanse too when you're not focused on it. Yeah. Like I don't have to post anything. Yeah. I don't. I don't. Nobody I'm important in my life is gonna reach out to me in the DMs. So yes, I just text my friends. I don't. Friends I, don't and... I don't. I haven't posted on my stories. Um, Twitter. I just haven't posted on TikTok. I just kind of like detoxing a little bit from it. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I see something, I'll post. I'll like share it. Yeah. But that's about it. Some so, some funny reel that yeah, you found. Yeah. Yeah. Even then, I'll just like I'll send that to my friends, but. Are you, are you one of those Instagram accounts that like blocks DMs and blocks certain people to like, so they don't reach you? I definitely, you know what this Because year, you love interacting with your fans. I do interact with But there's with also my, those 12 People don't believe me, that, I'm the one interacting with my fans. Yeah. I'm the one on there, I sit there, I give myself an hour a day and I just respond to people that leave me the most heartfelt messages. Cause to me it's like if they took time out of the day to support me and show me love and just send something kind, the least I can do is just respond to them, you know, and it makes their day, like, but on my, like, there's always that, that one fucking troll. Yeah. And I, I, I'm so proud of my, like, my following. I don't even have to say a word. My followers go and they just chew their asses out. I don't, they defend me. So, 
I know, it's fucking crazy. It's like a little... That's all like, you need is develop, develop those relationships like and they got your gang. back. It's a, it's a little gang. Cortez. All the hyenas come out to play yeah. and then you got your, your family backing you. And even alone, you fucking loser. And I'm just like, damn, <laughs> oh my God, all right. And I kind of just let it be. And then once I see like the fans starting to fight with each other, I just delete it. I don't want that kind of energy, nor mm -hmm. am I trying to portray that on my social media either, you know? Mm -hmm. I want my page to be like an outlet for people and they need some kind of word, words of encouragement, yeah. some kind of motivation, whatever it is. And this year actually is what I've really tried hard to be like vulnerable on social. Yeah, it's to hard. Right? It is hard. Just to show the fact, like people out there, it doesn't matter the amount of followers we have what fucking numbers there like life hits us just as hard as anybody else in this fucking world mm -hmm. we're humans and um i think they've seen that they've seen that through me mm -hmm. and it's, it's been hard and now it's now i'm in a place where it's like okay well let me just take a break from social media take some time for myself because if i'm not okay how the hell am i going to portray this image yeah. it's just false it's tough and you start to see through those cracks too. Like I, I've done interview after interview after interview after interview before, you know. Not not that it's like as equally the same amount of pressure as being a fighter and dealing with you know people coming after you and like in the DMs and stuff. Yeah. But it's like you get to a point where you're kind of burnt out of it all. Yeah. And you're like, should I stop or like, no, I'm tough enough to keep going. You and know, it's your body. Not, yeah, you know, it's not too much that I'm burnt out. It's more that I'm I'm just. I just don't need nothing negative towards me right now. Yeah. You know, I, I, I've gone through some fucked up shit this year that I just don't want, I don't need any more negativity coming my way. Yeah. And it's like, it just takes that one troll for me to fucking lose it. And I'm like, you know what? Let me just stay off of it. It just triggers you. You know, yeah. because it would just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't mess up my entire day, but it's just that extra little edge that, that I don't need. That's because like you're constantly working on yourself, whether it be like what you want for your career, what you want for your personal life, relationships, friendships, and it's like you're growing every day to get into a certain specific mindset. And then there's that one idiot who's just like, for whatever reason, like not there, not working yeah. on themselves and something triggers them, they say negative comments. Yeah. And then for a split second, you're like, oh, you know, it's yeah. like, why can't everybody be in growth mode like yeah. me? And it, yeah, 100%, and it's, um. I'm definitely in a place where I'm I'm just learning to embrace the now because my entire life has been what am I gonna do here in two, three, yeah. five years? I've never really been in the now just because I'm so focused on being successful and what's gonna happen and now it's I've kind of forced to face the now mm -hmm. with all these injuries. And it's like, because if I focus what I'm going to do here by the end of next year, it drives me crazy because I can't do nothing about it right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I can't train. I can't. I can be on social media, but instead, like, uh, instead of, I'm, I'm out in nature, I'm reading my book, I'm, I, I'm, I go to therapy. I'm, yep. So I'm just focusing myself. I'm going to, like, I, I got closer to God. I'm going to church. Nice. Um, what church are you going to? Impact. Impact's awesome. Do you? Have you gone? Travis's church, right? Yes. Travis is amazing. Uh, PT, yeah. He's yeah. amazing. I, I, I kid you not, I started going in, um, oh my God. I think like back in August, mm -hmm. last August, almost a year it now. It flies by. And it's, and it's, it's, it's changed my way of thinking for the better. It's gave me a lot more peace, peace, calmness. Um, Travis, without even knowing, has helped me in my life. You know what I you mean? You just need to find that one good pastor that you can relate to. I feel like and every Sunday. you know what's Sunday, crazy? He grew up in the same neighborhood as I did, in Maryville, in the west side so of the So you have that connection Valley. right off the bat. So hearing him speak, it was just, it kind of just reeled me in because I was like, yo, we speak the same language, mm -hmm. you know? But you're closer to God, so I, like, let me see what this is about. Yeah. Oh, when you go every, it like restarts your week. Yeah. Especially if the passage, like if his, what he's saying in his sermon hits, yeah. it's like it's going on in your life. At least you can relate to what's yeah, going on in your life 100%. through that sermon. You're like, I'm reset. I'm not the only one. A hundred percent. Everybody's and, going through shit. Yeah. And um, he's just real, you know, mm -hmm. a, real, a real pastor. So yeah, I've been going to church. I'm just doing a lot on um, like healing myself from within. Clearing up my mind, just 
focusing on my cover. Yeah, which is perfect. That's all you need. Yeah, yeah, and just having great people around me. Mm -hmm. You know. You know, you know. There's always someone in the circle that, where like at least you'll be able to pick up, like, oh, that person probably shouldn't be. I shouldn't be hanging around them. Yeah. Oh, you, you know what? I'm really, I'm, I'm really good at choosing who I'm around. Yeah. Um, and my friends know, like my my tight friends, they know, like, ah, uh, this person might be. They'll tell me, hey, Tracy, you know, uh, this is the crowd, but like, no, it's cool. And I'm so like, I go with the flow with everything, mm -hmm. and I mean with everything. I'm not. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. People portray me as like a stuck-up female, based off the comments on that video. Uh -huh. And I'm just, I don't know. I'm nothing like that. It was like 420,000 views. Was it? Yeah. That's wild. And it's like the majority of those comments just That's, like, ah, I'm like, she doesn't know what she's talking about. But it's like she does. She's fighting. She, did you lose your rank because of the the year off yeah. already? I, I don't know. I don't Google my, myself. Yeah. I get asked that a lot. They're like, did, are you still 13? I'm like, yeah. I don't fucking know. You know, I just know when I come back. I don't just know I'm going to be one in a, yeah. in a couple of years. So yeah. That's all that matters. Just know when I come back, I, we're going to make some noise. So. so when it comes to, because I've heard you multiple times on multiple different shows, whether it's like mine or the Bulls or Jasmine's show, it's like you really love facing pressure I and adversity. I do. And all that stuff. You have a torn MCL. You want to go shoot some hoops? I'm down. You want to go shoot some